What is up, YouTube? This is Thomas the Tran coming at you with the Game Maker Studio 2 tutorial. Today, I will be showing you how to set an object on a path. This is going to get fun, and as you can see, it's very quite simple. Now, let us get started. So let's open this resources. First, you're going to want to get Sprite. I'm just using this normal little cute water slime. Cute. And then, yeah, so that's going to be our slime. So what you're going to want to do, like everything else in this game, is create an object. Now, you can name this object literally anything you want. I'm going to name it water slime as to keep consistent with my other names. And then you're going to want to select whatever Sprite you want for it. And then you're going to want to go into the create event. Now you're going to want to search up path right here. Come down here and drag out start following path. Now you see how there's this path option and it's no one. Now we need to create our very own path. So let's do that right now. So let's right click path and then create path. So and then you can just name this path whatever you want. Let's just name this water. Path water. All right. So you may be thinking to yourself, but Thomas, it may be very hard setting a path that you, because you can't see the map. Like, I want to know where I'm going to be putting these like paths, yo. Well, don't worry, viewer. I have a solution for that. You're just going to want to open up whatever room you, you want. So, like, for this one, we'll be opening up tutorial. And then you're going to want to do create new path layer. And then you're going to want to select the path of which you want to place onto this room. And lo and behold, bam, 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 and bam. You can place them wherever you want relative to the map, and you can see exactly where you will be placing them. So um, let's, let's do a similar fashion to the first guy, where we'll have him going straight, go down a little, and then keep going straight. That seems like a good path to set. Alright, so now let's put this aside for now, and then let's reopen out back our water slime. So, now we can set him on the path of water, and then set speed. So, this is how fast he'll be going on the path. Let's do something simple, like 5. Now, on end, this is, this is pretty important. So, when it gets to the end of the path, the object can do one of four things. It can either stop, which basically does what it sounds like. It'll stop right at the end. And there's restart where it will bring the object back to the start of the the loop, but it won't actually follow the path again. And then there is loop where it will just consistently teleport back to the start and then start the path all over again. But what we saw in the beginning is reversed and that's what I'll be doing for this tutorial because after he reaches towards the end of his path, the object will come around and go back to the beginning of the path, which you'll see right here as I place our little water slime. Let's place him right here. All right, so relative is pretty important. Um, if you want him to follow the, the path to a T, like if you want him to stay on this path exactly um then you will want to put true for relative because that will automatically just teleport him oops wrong room it'll automatically teleport him to the path that is assigned to him as you will see right here in a second see how he was at the corner of right here at the beginning right when the game runs he is immediately teleported to the top of this path right here and then just does the loop and as you can see he is going about his cute little slime life uh, just doing a little loop but as you noticed Thomas he's doing a moonwalk he's not turning around whenever he goes a certain direction don't worry viewer we will be getting to that in just a short moment um well in fact we will be getting to that right now but in any case Relative, if you want it to s follow the path exactly, you're going to want to do true. If you have multiple objects following the same path, I would set to false. 
because it would just have them doing their own paths on their own terms. But they will be following like similar patterns and stuff. Alright, so for um, the next step, you're going to want to do step. Haha, uh -huh, very funny. Um, but this is where it gets a little complicated, but don't worry, I'll walk you through it. So what you're going to want to do is convert this to GML. Um, yes. And then what you're going to want to type in is you're going to want to type this in exactly as I type it. If, open bracket, space, ABS, angle, underscore difference, 180, direction, close, close, is less than 90, close bracket, and one of those weird things, like weird brackets, you know, and then enter that and then image x scale is equal to one semicolon now enter again more brackets if else then image x scale oops x scale is equal to negative one semicolon and done so basically what you're telling the object to do is you basically if the angle difference is 180 which means that it'll fl like it flips to the x direction completely like if it flips directions completely then the image scale will the x scale would change so on the x axis so here let me open up the slime sprite shoot what am i doing there so say he is moving to the left he will be facing left which is a negative one if he does a complete 180 and moves to the right he'll be facing right because the the sprite will be flipped towards the right all right yeah sounds good so if you run it now it shall be as buttery smooth as butter i suppose see he is moving to the right he is looking right and then once he completes a cycle, he turns around and looks to the left while going left. And that is it for this tutorial. If you did like this video, please leave a fat thumbs up and smash that subscribe button. I shall see you guys in another tutorial. Have a good day, good sirs.